Jesus was the one who told the story of the lost son. This is the son who asked his father for his inheritance and took off for a distant country. There he squandered his inheritance in wild living. and Soon he had spent everything and had hit rock bottom. In great need and starving to death, he finally came to his senses. His plan was to go home and say to his father, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of the hired servants. So he got up and went to his father. Certainly he must have returned with apprehension. We live in a distant country when we live in defiance of the Heavenly Father. And whether you're a Christian that wandered away many years ago, or you're someone who's never come home, the question is, how does the Heavenly Father receive us when we do come home? When we've turned our back on Him, and when we lived according to our own desires. Well, Psalm 130 answers that, and I'm going to read that now. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. O Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to my cry for mercy. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, therefore you are feared. I wait for the Lord, my soul waits, and in his word I put my hope. My soul waits for the Lord more than the watchmen wait for the morning. More than the watchmen wait for the morning. O Israel, put your hope in the Lord. For with the Lord is unfailing love, and with him is full redemption. He himself will redeem Israel from all their sins. Make no mistake about it. The world is filled with trouble. There are depths of poverty, of sorrow, of grief, and of pain. Job talked about it. He said that man is born to trouble as surely as the sparks fly upward. And if you've ever been around the campfire, you know that sparks fly upward. And Jesus said, in this world, you will have trouble. But take heart, I have overcome the world. But here in this psalm, the psalmist is specifically speaking to the depths caused by sin. When you're thinking things like, Oh, I have so messed up my life. Or, I've tried. I've tried to do better, but I just can't get it right. I always fail. In these depths, we feel like there's no hope that there's no way out. It's an out-of-control, dark spiral down to rock bottom. You know, this could have started when you were a young child, or maybe just recently, in the last few months, you've started spiraling. There have been many people who have hit rock bottom. That's not necessarily a bad place to be because many people at this place turn to the Lord. Just as the psalmist here in Psalm 130 says, I cry to you, Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Some of the most heartfelt, sincere prayers have been offered in the depths. So rock bottom isn't the worst case scenario. The worst case scenario is staying there, especially when there's a way home. The psalmist here says, If you, Lord, kept a record of sins, Lord, who could stand? Standing before God as king or judge, that's common in the Bible. It's the idea of having to stand before him and give an account an account for our decisions, account for our lives. 
Romans 12, 14 says, So then, each of us will give an account of ourselves to God. So, we have this constant stream of never-ending sins that we tolerate in our life. You know, maybe it's criticizing, bitterness, hate, pride. There are just so many to name. And then there are those that seem to take us into even greater depths. It's those sins of addiction, the pornography, the substance abuse, the sex. Now, let me say this. I know that addiction can be a multifaceted and complicated monster. Sometimes there's physical and mental dependency. Emotional trauma can create a gateway. But I know also that there's this willful choice to fulfill our own selfish desires. And of course, there are those sins that directly undermine God. It's honoring other gods. It's consulting the stars. So regardless of where you are on this spectrum of letting sin rule your life and spiral you downward, those sins drag you down to the depths and it holds you there. Well, I have some overwhelmingly good news. And I want you to know the key spiritual insight for today. The Heavenly Father extends gracious forgiveness and unfailing love. When you come home, you receive graciousness and love. Remember this. No one sins to the point that is beyond being forgiven. No one, no one, nothing. There is no point beyond God's forgiveness. Hebrews 8.12 says, For I will be merciful toward their iniquities, and I will remember their sins no more. God is merciful and a forgiving God. He is a gracious and loving Father. Which brings us right back to the son's return home. While the son was still a long way off, the father saw him coming and he ran to his son because he was filled with compassion for him and he threw his arms around him and he kissed him. Of course, the son was ready with repentance and confession. And he said, Father, I've sinned against heaven and against you. I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. But, but the father said to the servants, Quick, bring the best robe and put it on him. Bring a ring for his finger and sandals for his feet. Bring the fattened calf and kill it. Let's have a feast and celebrate. For this son of mine, he was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And so they began to celebrate. Hey, I want to encourage you. I want to encourage you to come home to the Father's love and forgiveness. For the first time in your life, acknowledge your sins and repent. Be reconciled to God. Come into relationship with Him. Or if you've wandered away many years ago or months ago, come to Him and confess your sins and be cleansed from all unrighteousness. And then what? Well, God's forgiveness opens our heart to Him in reverence and in service. We respect that God's gift of grace was costly to him. It cost him his son. And we respect that. We can't be dismissive of what was so costly.
to our Heavenly Father. And we can't treat forgiveness cheaply by slipping back into a sin miserable life. Listen to Romans 6, 1 and 2. What shall we say then? Shall we go on sinning so that grace may increase? By no means. We died to sin. How can we live in it any longer? God forbid that we would just keep sinning. All of your life, sin has been the boss and told you what to do. But in Christ, you are dead to that sin boss and alive to God, your Father. The old life is gone. The new life grows rapidly because it's coming. We are only forgiven with the Spirit's transforming life working within us. Don't go back to that empty, destructive lifestyle. You don't have to do that. Don't do it. The psalmist here in Psalm 130 goes on to say, I wait for the Lord. My whole being waits, and in His Word I put my hope. We're not left without guidance to figure out how life works. He has given us His Word. The Word of God gives us wisdom and clarity and certainty. So much wisdom. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not into your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him and He will direct your path. The Word of God, the biblical scriptures, gives us direction and correction that always points us home to a loving, gracious, and forgiving Father.